Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Let's we'll start our class now. Okay, for this week, uh, we will continue. Actually, it's not uh, week four, chapter four. Okay, so this week we will continue uh, our discussion on the uh, spectrometry uh, spectroscopic based methods, okay, which is uh, for AES, Atomic Emission Spectrometer, ICP OES, actively coupled plasma. Uh, and then uh, uh, join with OES, Optical Emission Spectrophotometer, and ICPMS, Inductively Coupled Plasma Mass Spectrometry. All right. Okay, for the lecture outline, I will first uh, introduce to the methods, and then we will learn about a flame atomic emission spectroscopy, AES, theory of inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy, ICP OES. And then uh, instrumentation of ICP OES, uh, and then application of ICP OES. And then we learn about theory of inductively coupled plasma mass spectro uh, photometer, um, sorry, mass spectrometry, ICPMS, and then instrumentation of the instrument and application of ICPMS. All right, previous class. Okay, in the previous class, I have shown uh, to you the uh, Theory of AES, the difference with AES and AAS is AAS, we, we uh, you know, we detect the, the loss of uh, energy from the spectrum, okay, after we introduce the atomization, okay, of the analyte. And for AES, we detect the emission from the uh, analyte itself after it being revert from excited state to uh, ground state, the electron of the analyte back or revert from the excited state to the ground state level. How the uh, electron in the analyte excited from ground state to excited state level is when we we atomize the uh, analyte and uh, we introduce the energy using flame. We burn the sample, right? We burn the uh analyte all right the advantage of as is all atoms in a sample are excited and detected simultaneously okay and uh, there we have uh, atomic uh, emission intensity sorry this is not aas okay aes okay please make it correction Right, so uh, this is the uh, wavelength for for each of the uh, metals to to uh, emit okay the uh, spectrum with different wavelength. Okay, type of uh, atomic emission spectrometry. The first one we have AES, flame AES. Okay, uh, meaning that we have flame AES. Flame is the atomizer. Okay. And then we have uh, inductively coupled plasma emission spectrometry, ICP AES. So ICP is the atomizer, okay. And then AES is the detector, okay. Inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. So ICP is the atomizer, okay. And MS is the detector. Right. This is the concept of AES. So the atoms, okay. Similar with the uh, Similar with the uh, AAS, we have a sample here in, in the form of solution. It will be pumped into the atomizer. Okay, so it will uh, spray in term uh, in in the form of aerosol, and the flame will burn the sample. Okay, all right. And then we have a, a lens here, and we have a mirror. Okay, so when the the atoms of the analyte okay being introduced to the flame. The electrons in the electro uh, in the uh, analyte will excited from ground state to excited state, right? And then it will back again from excited state to to ground state. Okay, this is excited state. 
okay this is the ground state okay and when it revert from the excited state to the ground state it will emit some energy specifically different with every type of elements so and uh, the lens okay will then uh, focus all the uh, spectrum into the slit filter and we have a photo detector to determine how much is the energy and it is it is uh, uh, you know the, the the wavelength is unique for every element okay so what is different between aas and aes okay in aas remember we have source of source of what source of spectrum okay and then the sample will be aspirated here in the flame, will burn, and the, the elements, okay, the atom of the element will absorb the similar amounts of, uh, you know, the, 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 the elements with a similar wavelength with the source, okay? For example, source we have let PB. So if we have lead in the in the sample, it will be burned in the flame, and then the electron will absorb the wavelength from the source. the The lead electron, the lead outer electron, will absorb the energy from the source, and then the detector will detect loss of energy from the source. Okay, All right. So. The loss of energy will represent how much okay, the concentration of the lead. Different with AAS, AAES, sorry, we, we don't have a source of uh, spectrum, right? We don't have source of spectrum here because it only detects the emission of the, of what? The emission of what? The emission of the energy in terms of light Okay, when the when ele the electron revert from excited state to ground state, okay, different with AAS, it will detect the, the uh, okay the, the element will absorb the energy from the source to excited okay for the electron to be excited from ground state to excited state, and the loss of energy will detect. But for this AES, okay, when the sample are burned in the flame okay and then some of okay uh the analyte will absorb the energy from the flame to be excited and then when it revert to ground state there will be some energy specifically for every element will detect we will, will be emit and then detect by the detector right but what is the the the, the weakness of aes it will detect in large concentration only in ppm level okay sorry ppm level okay but for uh, aas it can be detected also in ppb level what is ppm and what is ppb can anybody give me an answer what is ppm and what is ppb Part per million and part, part per, per billion. billion. Which, which one is uh, larger? Part per million or part per billion? Million. Million or billion? Million. Right? million. million. So this one is larger. Meaning that, okay, from uh, the difference from AAS and AES, which one have uh, a lower detection limit? A yes. A yes. Which yes. One? Lower detection limit. A A S. Who answer A A S? Which one have lower detection limit? A A S or A E S? Okay. Who agree with me? A A S. Anybody? Okay, Aziz Abdul Mahdi said AES. Okay, who said AES? AES. 
Okay, Asgar say AES. Anybody say anybody else that answer AES is have lower detection limit? Mm. Okay, so so that you don't understand yet. Okay, if if AAS can detect up to part per billion level, which is very small, and AAS only can detect part per million, which is quite large, so the, the instrument that have lower detection limit is AAS, not AES. If we have a concentration that have a large uh, value, for example, I have a 5 ppm, okay, of calcium. So I can detect this using AES. No need to use AAS. But if I don't have AES, I only have AES. So what I'm going to do if the detection limit for calcium for AES is only up to 1 ppm, what I'm going to do with the with the sample? What I'm going to do with my sample that has 5 ppm of calcium? If I want to uh, read it using AAS? We use flame. Flame okay. AAS. That, okay, for example, if also if I use flame, the the you know uh, the detection limit, okay, the lowest Oh, sorry, not the lowest. The highest concentration that uh, I can detect. Uh, no, 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 not the highest. The lowest, okay. The lowest concentration that I can detect using AS is one ppm. Meaning that the the lowest amount that I can detect using AS is one ppm. But now I have five ppm of calcium uh, concentra uh, of ca of calcium concentration in a solution. So what I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna do with the uh, solution? What I need to do? Remember the first chapter I, that I have taught you? I need to dilute. Remember that term? No. Remember that? Dilution? No. M1 V1 equal to M2 V2. Remember that? Meaning that I have to dilute. I have 5 ppm of calcium in a solution. All right? And then I don't have uh, AES that can detect at large concentration. I only have AES. But the problem is the detection limit, okay, the lowest concentration that can be detected by AES for calcium is 1 ppm. Meaning that my 5 ppm calcium solution, I, I need to dilute. Don't you remember dilute, dilution process? I think for those who learn in Malaysia, in the matriculation, you have done the dilution, right? Am I correct? Yes, no? doctor. Yes. yes. So remember, what is the formula for dilution? M1V1 equals to M2V2. Yes, M1. M is uh, uh, referring to what? Uh, initial initial M, concent M, concentration. M1, M1 is the initial concentration, right? And V1 M. is the initial volume. Equal to M2. M2 is the final concentration times V2. V2 is the final volume. That is the equilibrium. That is the, uh, you know, the sunnatullah. Okay. That is what it is that uh, the God create. Okay. If you have a, an initial amount of a concentration, you times the volume. Okay. And then if you dilute the solution and times the volume, okay, you have the same amount. Okay. Meaning that. Uh, if we have the initial uh, concentration, right, and then we need to dilute to um, the final concentration, M2, and we have also uh, the amount of M2, uh, we, we have the container with, for example, 5, uh, five, milli, five, uh, five liter of uh, final volume. So 
the only thing that we need to calculate is the initial volume from the initial concentration right so that um if the detection limit of as is one ppm for calcium meaning that i need to dilute my solution right so but my my uh, previous question which one is the uh, have low detection limit so of course as because we have learned previously as can detect up to part per billion level but for aes is only can detect in part per million level Okay, my next question is which of the instrument, both instrument, which one is more expensive? Logically. AAS. Yes, of course, AAS. Because of what? Because we have, uh, for the first thing is we the detection limit is lower. The instrument that have the lower detection, detection limit, it is more expensive, okay? Because the uh, the instrument is more complicated. Okay, because it is difficult to detect a small amount of analyte. All right, that is the logic. And then the second one is for AS, we have source of spectrum. Okay, in AS, we just have flame and detector, right? That is the logic. Okay, all right. Okay, actually, actually, uh, when we burn, the uh, you know the different element of metal it will display different color of the flame that is the basic thing that you need to know that's why for different element we have a different amount of energy that being emit after it being excited okay let me see a video first okay i will show you a video what is the difference between the flame colors for different elements, right? You can see the YouTube video? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. yes. let us see. What is the color? This is And this video is lithium. Yeah, the first one is lithium. Observe what color this is lithium. Remember that you want to be descriptive with your colors. Calling this red may not be a good description. You may want to say something about the pink tones that are in there. You can see the pink color. There may be another substance that oh, we test is? later that also will appear to be a red color. So we want to just be extra descriptive with our colors. This substance is going to be sodium. I need to clean my wire real quick and heat it up so it's ready to test. Yeah. See that sodium burns uh, uh, bright yellow, strong intensity yeah. to that flame. Yeah. Uh -huh. The sodium. This is going to be the test for oh, potassium. Yeah, potassium is a lavender yeah. color. This substance is calcium. Calcium burns a bright red orange. You saw it there first. See that bright red, red orange? Different than the sodium. The sodium is more yellow. This is more orange. This is strontium. Strontium and calcium seem to be pretty close in color.
And this one I think gives off a little bit more red, more of a pinky, pinkish red. So we're gonna get a little bit more just to see. So you may want to go back and look at the calcium one and compare that to the strontium one. This is barium. It used to give off a yellow green color. Now it's gone. So as soon as you touch your substance into the flame, that's the color that you're observing. The longer you hold it in there, the longer the chance of having it burn off. So it's that initial color that you first witness when you put your substance into the flame. It's what you should be observing. See, it gives a yellow green color. The last substance is copper. And you can see this puts off a blue, bright blue green color. Different than the barium, the barium was more yellow green. Whereas this is that bright blue right in the center, green highlights. I'm not really sure what the yellow is jetting off of that, but that typically does not happen. So you should be looking at that blue, blue and green is copper. Wait for a while. Okay, you can see the uh, different color of the flames, right? You can see that? Yes. All right, so 
with our naked eye, we also can see the, uh, you know, the difference between the uh, color of every element when it is being excited. Okay. Right. So uh, the second instrument we have um, inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectrometry or um, ICP OES. Remember, in the instrument, um, if we have a dash here, okay, okay, meaning that there are two parts in the instrument. The first part is the atomizer, okay. And the second part is the detector. Okay, detector. So in this instrument, our detector is also based on the emission spectros copy. So we don't have source of light to capture how much of the spectrum being absorbed, right? But because that is for absorption spectrometry. This is emission spectrometry. We only measure the emission of the spectrum when the uh, when the when the elements in our analyte okay, being revert from excited state to ground state. So in ICP, okay, for the atomizer, we have inductively coupled plasma. So we have the word plasma here. So what is plasma? We use the plasma for atomization, and we use optics. Okay, optical. We, o mean optics. Optical mean what? Okay, something that is involving um, light. Okay, involving light. Okay, and then emit. Emit is for emission of the uh, spectrum. All right. So what is plasma? A plasma is a stream of highly ionized gas containing electrons and positive ions okay it is electrically conductive and it is affected by a magnetic field right so this is plasma plasma gas okay we have induction coil torch and so on okay and this is the normal energetic zone for plasma this is initial radiation zone okay and we have induction zone here and we have preheating zone here okay and plasma tail okay plasma tail is after the the uh, the uh, blade of the plasma and we have a plasma tail but the but analytical uh, zone happens here the burning for analytical process happen here okay so the theory of icp oes for the atomizer, it use inductively coupled plasma, ICP, a very high temperature, 6,000 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin. Okay, I need someone to um, change from Kelvin, okay, convert from Kelvin to degree of Celsius. How much is it? 6,000 Kelvin, Kelvin is how much in Celsius? Please convert. Okay. Ifan, okay. How much? Five seven two seven two nine seven two seven degree of Celsius. Is it hot? Of course, extremely hot, right? It is hot until the ion become plasma. Okay. The source that is dissolves, vaporizes, okay, excites, ionized atom, and then intensity of light emitted is proportional to amount of element in the sample. This is a basic concept, okay, meaning that the intensity of the emission of the light being provided when we burn the sample is equal or proportional to the amount of the element in the sample. So ICP is ideally suited to rapid multi-element analysis, okay? Wavelength are characteristic of the element. So as I told you, 
every single element have a different wavelength of the energy, right? When it, uh, different wavelength of the light that being emitted, okay? If we burn a sample that containing a, more than one analyte, more than one element, it is okay because we have the detector can, that, that can differentiate the wavelength, okay? Of every um, emitted light and it can be uh, characterized as every element with the concentration. Because remember the 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 uh, the um, advantage of AES. Okay. Okay. Here I need to. Okay. Here I need to um, change. Please change in your note as well. This is AES, not AAS. Okay. The advantage of AES is all atoms in a sample are excited and detectedly detected simultaneously. Meaning that if we have uh, uh, more than one analyte, okay, for example, lead, cadmium, calcium, and so on, we can detect it simultaneously. Okay, we can detect at one time. Okay. The different with AAS, right? AAS only can detect a single element at one time. Am I correct? Okay. So the the theory of, uh, of ICP ML, ICP OES is provides high sample through throughput and wide calibration range, low background, low detection limits for many elements. Okay. Uh, different with uh, AES, the ICP OES have a lower detection limit, okay? Meaning that it can detect up to PPB level. Different with AES, right? AES only PPM level, okay? So ICP OES up to PPB level. And it's major, minor, and trace analysis in one solution and few interference, okay? This is a process in ICP OES. We have a solution here that containing our analytes, okay? And then it being vaporized, okay? Become atomized, it, it, be, uh, it will be uh, undergo atomization, become gas, okay? And then it will be excited, okay? It, it, it will be burned okay, uh, into atoms, okay? And after that being in the plasma, it being ionized, okay? Because it's very hot, the atom will become ion, okay? Okay, in the ionization uh, part, okay, it is also excite, okay? From ground state, the electron uh, excite from ground state to excited state and release or emit an amount of energy and then in in ion form also it will uh, excite from ground state to excited state and release an amount of energy okay so removal of solvent is in the part of uh, dissolution here okay and then um the vaporization process of the sample okay from solid to gas okay and then the atomization happen in the gas form okay and then excitation from ground state to excited state, and then it will uh, emit okay an amount of energy here after in the emission process from the excited state to ground state okay, and then after that it being ionized okay. So the instrumentation diagram is RF generator okay. For the plasma, okay, we have torch of plasma, and then we have spectrometer, the optics, okay, and we have a detector, and the computer will translate in the in the form of concentration. Okay, this is the example of ICP OES that we we have. We also have this one in our lab. So again, I will tell you, when all of you can enter UTM, I will bring the whole class to the lab to see how the instrument, okay? To see how the instrument works. Do you want to see that, the instrument? Yes. All right, good. 
Okay, this is a schematic diagram of the instrument. Okay, uh, we have argon gas. Okay, this is for the uh, formation of plasma. Okay, we have a sample pump similar with uh, AS and AES. Okay, and then we have waste because after we pump the sample, we also have waste. Okay, we have nebulizer. Okay, to transform the sample into an aer aerosol. Okay, spray chamber. We have torch of plasma, and then here. The optics is here to measure okay, uh, the emission of the uh, emission of the light from the excited state to ground state um, revert. Okay, and then we, we have a spectrometer measure how much is the uh, um, spectrum being emitted and then transform into electronically into the detector and then our computer will transform into concentration. Okay. So ICP and sample introduction system one until four. Okay, this is ICP and sample transformation system. Spectrometer to spe separate light five. Okay, here. And then detector is number six. Okay. And then the data system is number seven here. Okay, we have different part of the instrument. All right. Okay, class. Um, from the notes, actually, I will give a quiz, okay, a simple quiz. This is a previous note, so sorry. Okay, previously we have our quiz, right? How many quiz that we have been done before this? One. One quiz. So this is a second quiz. All right. Okay. Uh, we have learned until this part. Okay. All right, so this is an open quiz. Okay, come up with your notes or anything. Okay, I need you to answer this quiz based on the notes. Okay, that the, the note I have given already, right? And based on my lecture, please answer the question. Write down your name, okay, the section and my name, lecturer there. Answer all the uh, questions. Okay, and then submit it in e-learning. I will have I will create a platform to submit. Every single one of you will submit individually. All right. So our class is only for one hour today. So the next one hour is my pop quiz. Okay. You don't know, right? Today you have we have a quiz because it is quite surprised. Okay. And then uh, please uh, submit it, I think, by today or so. Okay? After uh, one hour, I give only one hour. At 1 p.m., you need to submit in the e-learning. All right? All of you understand? Yes, doctor. All right. So please answer. Just open your notes and answer. Okay? So uh, our recording for this uh, class on uh, only until this time. Because after this, you have a quiz. So I will upload the video of the class only about 40 minutes. Okay. Because we have uh, to answer the question. Okay. This quiz only have two questions, two big questions, and we have a sub question there. Okay. All right. I think it's not so difficult. We can answer all these questions very easy, right? It is, uh, you know, combination of uh, chapter one and chapter two. Okay.
Are you answering the quiz now? <laughs>